Hey guys, Priya here. Back again with another interesting topic. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do so so that you can get instant notifications when I post a video. If you are new here, hi, I'm Priya and I'm a foundation year one doctor in the UK. I'm currently working in the general surgery department and I'm also a lift trainee which means two days in a week I spend my days in the general practice and other three remaining days I work in the hospital. Alright, let's get into the topic of the day, varicose vein. Super common one that you see in general practice and sometimes in the secondary care too. I'll cover the definition, causes and risk factor, complications to look and ask for, and how to do a clinical examination in a patient with varicose vein and finally management in primary and secondary care. Varicose vein is a condition in which the veins enlarge due to malfunction of their valves causing improper flow of blood and pooling as a result. It is defined as dilated tortuous superficial veins that is most commonly found in legs, sometimes in the groins too. They are visible and palpable and is an indication of superficial lower extremity insufficiency. For most people, they are mainly a cosmetic concern but when it's left untreated, they may lead to many complications. So, what's causing the lower extremity venous insufficiency? Before that, let's dive into the pathophysiology of a normal venous system. Blood from superficial venous capillaries is directed upward via one-way valve into the superficial veins. So these veins they will drain via the perforator veins which will pass through a muscular facial layer into the deep veins. Varicose veins are thought to be caused by incompetent valves in this affected vein which will result in the reflux of blood and therefore increased pressure in the vein distally. Unlike deep veins which have thick walls and confined by fascia, superficial veins are unable to withstand the high pressure and eventually they become dilated and tortuous. Other pathological factors such as weakness or degeneration of the vein wall may also cause varicose veins. Besides, incompetent deep veins can also cause reflux of the blood back to the superficial vein and form varicose vein due to the increased venous pressure. These are some risk factors worth knowing for varicose vein. Firstly, increasing age. The prevalence of varicose vein increases with age. Next, having a positive family history. A case control study that was done in 1994 found that the risk of developing varicose vein is 90% if both parents are affected. 25% in male and 62% in female if one parent is affected and 20% if no parent is affected. Next up, female sex. Female has higher impact of developing varicose vein because of the hormones. Progesterone is thought to lead to passive venous dilation which then lead to valvular dysfunction. Whereas estrogen produces collagen fiber and causes smooth muscle relaxation both of which will lead to venous dilation. Pregnancy and obesity increases the risks too due to high intra-abdominal pressure and increased blood volume. Prolonged standing and sitting is another one. And last but not least, not forgetting deep vein thrombosis which is also called as DVT, can cause valvular damage and dysfunction in the deep veins leading to increased pressure, subsequent distension and varicose vein formation. When varicose veins are left untreated for a very long time, it can cause complications such as bleeding, thrombophlebitis which is inflammation of the vein, deep vein thrombosis which presents as unilateral calf tenderness, swelling and redness, changes in skin pigmentation such as atrophy blanche that can be seen in this picture, venous eczema due to hemosiderine deposition from the fragments of broken red blood cell, lipodermatosclerosis where the dermal and the subcutaneous layer fibrose and lead to indurated skin, skin ulceration such as venous ulcer. 3 to 6 percent of people with varicose veins may have venous ulcer so it's good to have a look during your examination and also not forgetting the social part of the patient affecting their lifestyle such as having depression and also decreased quality of life. 
When it comes to history, it's relevant to ask about symptoms of the varicose vein and its complication, such as pain, itchiness, swelling, and decreased range of movement. Is it affecting their daily life? Has there been any surgery done on the veins or any trauma? Find out the risk factors of the patient and do not forget to clarify what are their concerns with the varicose vein. Then, you should examine the patient while sitting and standing. Palpate the veins for any trail, look for skin changes and ulcers, make sure you document them in your notes and most importantly, check for their peripheral pulses, especially lower leg ones like dorsalis pedis, posterior tibialis, popliteal and femoral pulses to rule out arterial insufficiency. There are some traditional tests that can be done such as the tap test, auscultating the veins for bruits, handheld Doppler, duplex venous scanning, Trendelenburg test, cough impulse test and Perthes test. But sometimes the time is very limited in general practice. So if you have more time, feel free to apply these tests to confirm your diagnosis. Management is based on bleeding or non-bleeding varicose veins. If it's a bleeding varicose vein, offer first aid, stop the bleeding and admit the patient urgently to vascular service. But if it's not bleeding, you can educate the patients with verbal and written information and offer self-care advice such as losing weight, including more physical activity in daily life and elevating legs at night to allow better circulation. When do you refer to vascular service? When there is complications such as recurrent varicose vein with lower limb symptoms, skin changes, thrombosis and ulcers. When referral is not needed, make sure to exclude arterial disease with ankle brachial pressure index which is also called as ABPI and then offer them compression stockings, specifically class 2 stockings which is recommended by NICE guideline to exert more pressure near the ankles and feet providing an extra squeeze that will promote blood flow. ABPI less than 0.5 is an indication of severe arterial insufficiency and compression stockings are strictly contraindicated in this case and the patient need to be referred urgently for specialist vascular assessment. There are some interventional treatments done in secondary care for varicose veins. First, duplex ultrasound allows you to look at the extent of the truncal reflux and plan for a treatment. Endothermal ablation is using high frequency radio wave or laser to seal the affected veins. Foam sclerotherapy is injecting an irritant foam into the affected vein which will result in an inflammatory response that causes the vein to close. Finally, surgery is done by tying off and removing the affected vein. These are all done under local or general anesthesia depending on the vascular surgeon. Alright, that's the end of my topic today. I have included my reference in the description below for further reading. Thank you so much everyone and see you in the next video. Ciao!